G'day Ziggy D here and in this video I want to share with you guys some of the things I've learned about going low life on a Magic Find character in Path of Exile. There are two different ways to go low life with a uh, Magic Find character, with any character really, and uh, that is to either be blood magic or to be mana based. And uh, I eventually ended up deciding going blood magic, but that was after a fair bit of kind of uh, comparison between the two different styles, so it's not immediately a clear cut choice. So I'll talk about um, how to kind of uh, make either of those things work, and then uh, some of the implications of that decision, and also some of the uh, things you can do to make uh, at least the blood magic side of things work, since that's the side I'm using. So, the two different ways of making it work, uh, firstly, blood magic and mana based. So on this character, as you can see, I am blood magic low life. Uh, the alternative is to uh, invest a little bit into mana to be able to fund your skills with mana, run some auras on mana, and run some auras on life. Now you'd think with both the life and mana pools available to you to run auras that you could run a, you know, a large amount of auras and that you could probably run more auras than a blood magic sort of character since I essentially don't have any mana to reserve. This is zero out of zero mana thanks to blood magic. But uh, thanks to this little node here, Mortal Conviction, which I'm sure many of you guys know, is pretty crazy. You can actually reserve uh, more auras on a low-life blood magic character than you can otherwise. Something like six or seven auras is uh, quite possible and easy to do on a, on a uh, blood magic style character, and it's possible to even push that up to potentially eight. So, uh, and then, you know, once you start, that's, that's even without, like, Alpha's How or anything like that. You can, once you start incorporating some of those unique items, there are further things you can do. As you can see here, I've got the Aura Calculator for my current character, uh, Running Discipline, Herald of Thunder, Purity of Ice, Vitality, Purity of Lightning, Purity of Fire. So basically, all of the Purities, Vitality, Herald of Thunder, and Discipline. Obviously, Discipline is going to be the first one you'd try and run, since as a low-life character, you need Energy Shield to be able to stay alive. So that's essentially it. A low life character is someone who uh, reserves themselves to below 65%, uh, 65% or below. I think it's actually 65.5 rounds down to 65, so you can do some really fine tuning sort of things there. But essentially, I'm at, um, I think I'm 67% reserved, so that takes me over the low life threshold. Now, I suppose I should take a little bit of a side note for some of you guys who are kind of new to this sort of thing. Why, why go blood? Why go low life in the first place? So low life has a few different benefits. Uh, one of the major ones is pain attunement. 30% more spell damage when lo when on low life. Now, um, the way that this works is it's a, it's a more multiplier, so it's not additive with other spell damage increases. So it's not the same as just getting like, you know, three spell damage nodes or something, or two spell damage nodes. What it actually does, it takes all of your damage after calculations and then multiplies it by 1.3. So it's a really big DPS jump. Other things you can use, uh, there's a, quite a few different uh, uniques and skills and things that can take advantage of low life. Just some examples, I'm using Red Beak here, which is 100% increased damage. This is an additive increase. Uh, basically, this is equivalent of a pretty decent wand, uh, and it's incre incredibly cheap. So this is great if you want to make a budget character. You can make uh, a low life character much cheaper using something like this, because uh, to get a 100% spell damage one is quite difficult. The drawback is, of course, it doesn't have any cast speed, so uh, this is just like a budget sort of getting started low life thing. Another uh, example is Wonder Traps, which is 100% increased rarity of items when found uh, found when on low life. Now, there are quantity boots you can wear instead, and sometimes quantity is a little bit better than rarity, but for 100% quantity, when you're first starting out a magic character, magic find character, for, that is uh, a pretty a pretty significant increase to the amount of magic find you can get. So uh, you can get some you can get some pretty sweet value. And then the third reason is uh, auras. You can run a lot more auras on blood magic. Uh, sorry, on on low life as I was, uh, you know, as I was saying. And then you can, if you go blood magic, you can run even more again. So the idea is that you can stack a bunch of auras. You can either support a party, you can support minions if you're playing a low life magic finding summoner, for example. Uh, or you can just increase your own power. There's low, for example, low life spectral throw characters would, you know, were pretty popular because they would be able to run uh, the two damage auras. Now they can run heralds and they can run purities to stop themselves from dying to reflect. So there's quite a few things you can do just there. So let's go back uh, to the blood magic versus mana based sort of scenario. I did uh, I did sort of plan trees for both and compared them and uh, the mana one was a little bit easy to get up and running but I thought the potential of the blood magic one was a bit higher when I planned out my trees. And obviously depending on your build this sort of thing's going to change. I'm not going to get into the build too much because a lot of this routing and stuff is going to change in 1.3 but kind of let's just focus on uh, how to uh, you know make blood magic work uh, compared to mana. 
So to go mana based, I think the best way to do it is to go Zealot's Oath. Now that was originally going to be that was going to be my plan originally, uh, and you can see Zealot's Oath just here. Life regeneration applies to energy shield instead of life. Now this uh, gives you a lot of increased survivability as an ES character. You can pick up something like Shaper. You can run the Vitality Aura. You can uh, pick up some extra regen in here. There's lots of regen scattered around the tree that you can pick up, and uh, any regen you get on gear will help a little bit. But it's not a major deal. Mostly you want to go with the percents. Now what I learned about this was I didn't know before is that it's actually calculated off your energy shield as well, not your life. I thought originally it'd be calculated off your life. So that means if you've got a pool of like 10,000 energy shield then you're going to get a lot of regen just for a couple percent of life regen. So uh, that's uh, that's really good because it means you can be taking damage and still regenerating energy shield, which one of the big drawbacks of energy shield is that when you take damage, you, uh, you know, you don't, it doesn't regen until you leave combat for six seconds, uh, though you can decrease that a little bit. So uh, that's one of the big advantages of being mana based is that you get that increase in survivability. So that was, uh, it was a difficult choice to sort of uh, not do that because to, uh, to, to go blood magic means to not take Zealot's Oath. Now the reason for that is to go blood magic you need life to cast your skills. So you can see I cast my totem and it costs life and then my life regenerates back. So that's thanks to you know the regen here and running the vitality aura that gives me enough to cast my skills. Now, uh, there are some problems associated with this. Firstly, obviously, uh, now I don't have a way of regenerating energy shield outside of Vile Discipline, which is fantastic. It's like basically, it's like a flask for um, dis uh, energy shield characters. Uh, but the other drawback is that when you cast these things, although you're not technically damaging yourself, as in it doesn't trigger cast when damage taken, I feel like this is a bug and I feel like it's something I need to change. But when, after you've taken damage, so I can probably demonstrate this for you guys just here. If you're casting blood magic uh, skills uh, as an as an energy shield character, uh, you will stop yourself from regenerating. So let's take let's just take a little bit of damage here. Okay. So I've taken a little bit of damage. I leave for about four seconds because that's what my energy shield retime is, and then I and then I recharge my energy shield. So now I'll take some damage this time, and now I'll cast. I'll keep casting even if I'm not taking damage. I'm not gonna not gonna regenerate any energy shield. So this means that um, you have to back off and allow your energy shield to recharge. You know, to basically stop using any skills if you want your energy shield to recharge. So that's the drawback of being a blood magic character. Now I've made this character work, and it's it, it is entirely functional. Uh, just using Vile Discipline and, you know, the fact that you're a totem builder if you're playing a summoner, you can kind of hang back behind your minions a little bit. You just have to be a little bit careful, you know, not spam your curse, not spam other things like that that cost life essentially because you're going to stop yourself from regenerating. So that is the drawback of going Blood Magic. Then obviously the, the positives were, again, being able to run a, uh, a lot of auras. So that was, and I think also a little bit less point investment in the tree. Essentially going Blood Magic meant that I basically spent uh, two extra points here. And uh, that's it. That's basically the entirety of the investment in going blood magic. Everything else can be dedicated to ES damage, whatever you want. Whereas to go blood, to go life, you need to pick up Zelt's Oath. Now in the current tree, that requires a lot of investment. One, two, three, four, five points to get Zelt's Oath. Now in the next 1.3 tree, however, maybe mana will be a little bit better as compared to life because Zelt's Oath is going to be up around here in the tree. So uh, maybe that would be a better option then. But even then, you still have to pick up uh, I think a little bit more regeneration is probably worthwhile to, you know, to maximize the usefulness of Zealot's Oath. And you also need to pick up some mana. You need to somehow be able to afford your mana skill, uh, costs. And as a totem build, for example, totems are pretty expensive. You know, it's not too hard to support that on life. And you can use a life flask to heal your life to keep using flame totems or, you know, keep using your skills. But uh, as a mana-based character, you either have to use a mana flask or you have to, um, you know, invest a fair bit into uh, mana regen, get some mana regen on gear, things like that. Potentially even run clarity, which can reserve quite a bit of mana or life. So uh, it's a, a fair bit more sort of investment to get the mana one working just there. So this was a pretty rambly video, but I just had kind of like a lot of uh, info. I just wanted to kind of like vomit all over you guys. So I don't know. Hopefully you found it interesting and some interesting points in there. A little bit of uh, expanding of knowledge because there's just so much uh, cool stuff I've learned from playing this character. And uh, I'll probably give you guys an update on how the overall project went tomorrow. So anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D and thanks for watching.